Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rentway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for April 3rd, 2023. Well, on Friday, boy, it took those bulls all the way to mid-afternoon on Friday to trigger that short squeeze, and we just had that surge into the end of the day as the bulls really pushed in with that end of quarter window dressing um, to close out the week. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in, let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Monday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thanks so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. How about we take a look at these charts and see if we can figure out how we may want to approach the market for today. Well, first off, as you can see here in the uh, diamonds chart, we had a good, good surge, a really good rally. And if I extend out this downtrend line, you can see that we're really going to be running into a fairly significant resistance level here this morning. Now, the Dow futures are surging up again this morning and largely due to the oil sector. Over the weekend, we had kind of a surprise decision from OPEC um, to suggest a substantial production cut coming um, in oil, the oil sector. And so we're seeing oil prices surging this morning. That's giving the diamonds here a little bit of a boost. And you can see pushing up here toward this next resistance level, if you've noticed, I did move this level from down here moving this level up to here to kind of contact some more of that resistance level in the chart and you will want to keep in mind if i were to extend that line across here we're really running into a very large resistance area here in the diamonds now with the bullishness that we're seeing here notice that we're going to be running into kind of the old double whammy up here in those resistance levels albeit we have broken over this downtrend here in the chart so lots of bullishness here coming into the morning if the bulls continue to find inspiration here on the day i would suggest maybe a press up into here into that resistance of the charts matter of fact i think i could move that line up just a little tiny bit um watch for a resistance area to come into play right into that area of the chart and then again if the bears find inspiration today maybe a push back down and that'd be a fairly big big point whipsaw um if we were to come back down and remember we've got some data coming out today that could certainly inspire those bears and i'll show you our t2122 indicator is also suggesting we're reaching an overbought condition for the short term so watch that closely now if we look at our spy spy is not nearly as happy here this morning as a matter of fact it's kind of straddling the fence it doesn't know what to do it's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place with the diamond surging up in the pre-market and the qqq moving lower so we see that we've broken this downtrend here in the chart and that is bullish for the market and we've held this big bearish trend here in the market broke above that and held it here as support so that's all bullish but as you can see we're running into a fairly significant level of price resistance here in the chart and this morning we're just kind of well camping out here trying to figure out what we do from here now if the bulls can break through that area if they find inspiration and break through that resistance area the next resistance area in the chart would be right up in there someplace and if those bears were to find inspiration and push us back down i think a retest down into here off of this price support would be the place those bears could push and again that'd be a pretty big um whipsaw in prices might be um, one of those um, reasons that we watch carefully for that potential attack of the bears. And then if we look at our QQQ, boy, QQQ surged hard on Friday, really pressed into this resistance area that I had marked on the chart. Um, certainly we have held this downtrend break. The bulls are con in control according to that area. They're also in control with the upside trend. And this big breakout here 
um, really pushed those bulls in there hard. But if you'll notice this morning, we're seeing just a little bit of bearishness in the pre-market here on um, the NASDAQ. As a matter of fact, NASDAQ futures are indicating about 80 points lower here this morning. And we are a bit overbought in the short term on the NASDAQ. So if those bulls find inspiration and push on through this level, well, let's look and see. Maybe up into here, and it would be a huge, huge stretch up into that area of the chart if they can get that much going here um, and find that inspiration. If the bears find inspiration, I would suggest a pullback into here, maybe back down around that trend. And, and let's think about this for a second, guys. Let's um, really remember that we, we have kind of slid out from underneath the earnings inspiration and our next um, quarter of earnings, the second quarter of earnings, really won't kick off in a big way until the 13th of the month when BlackRock and the big banks begin to report. So you'll want to keep that in mind that there's going to be a lot of uncertainty about these big banks and there's going to be a lot of uncertainty really about second quarter earnings. Um, um, anyway, so we'll want to watch that closely. You, you know that there's been quite a few reports out there with folks saying, uh, with analysts saying that the prices are too high. I don't know if that's the case, but we'll want to watch that. So watch that carefully here if we were to rest or pull back. And you could see there is that possibility of a rest or even a wide range consolidation just to come back to this trend for the next couple of weeks as we wait for those earnings to begin. Let's take a look at the IWM. IWM um, breaking through this resistance in the chart. And you can see I turned that green here um, today. So we broke up through there. And that's been a fairly significant level of price resistance. But uh, other than that, we still have a lot of work here to do on the IWM. Um, we've got a big downtrend here yet to be tested. And if uh, we can see bulls be inspired to push that through to the upside, well, right in there is where I'd be looking for that little bit of a problem here on IWM. So if the bulls are inspired and continue to push up, that's about the level I would be watching for the next area of resistance. If those bears are inspired today, well, look for a retest back down here, maybe testing these support areas and of course this big bear downtrend breakout uh, we might retest that as support in that area as well so watch that closely how about we take a look at our vix with that big surge um, in prices on friday you can see our vix came right back down here and settled in right around this 18 and a quarter 18 and a half area um, of the um, uh, VIX chart and we're, we're resting in here on a fairly big level of price support. Now the question is going to be um, will we be able to push this on through? Will the, will the bulls find enough inspiration here be able to push this on down um, below that level? And I gotta tell you if we push down below that level we may start to see a little bit of complacency building into the market but that could also trigger more of a short squeeze to the upside. There was a report from Goldman suggesting that the CTAs, the institutional computers, are kind of caught flat-footed, heavily short. And if the market were to squeeze to the upside, we could see those CTAs having to cover those short positions, and that could create that surge to the upside. But then on the other hand, we have these big economic data points coming our way that have been really problematic for us that could continue to suggest that weakness of the economy, the uncertainty of the earnings ahead, um, and that could trigger those, um, those bears to attack. So, boy, we're kind of in an interesting place here as we begin this week. Um, be a little bit careful and cautious and be watchful of anything. Um, we, I think there is that possibility we can see significant emotion here in the market and big whipsaws 
um, could be on the horizon, so watch that close. Now, if we take a look at our T2122, this is what I was talking about. Our T2122 on Friday stretched all the way up here into that bearish reversal zone where we're showing a little bit of overbought condition in the short term, meaning that we've stretched and stretched and stretched in this push to the upside with that end of quarter window dressing that we're really getting to a place where we're reaching out here toward the top level. Levels. Now with the diamond stretching up here this morning and that big surge in oil, that's going to be helpful to the bulls and we could really stretch up here and we can tag almost all the way up here at 100 um, first thing this morning with that push. Then, uh, then we don't really have a whole lot of room for this to move unless they can really trigger that big short squeeze. If they can't trigger that short squeeze, well, let's just keep in mind, we've got a lot of downside opportunity if those bears find something here in the market um, to inspire them to attack. So watch that close. And then our T2108, well, our T2108 surged nicely on Friday up into this next resistance level in the chart. We were suggesting that level up in here, around 35, 36% of the stocks holding above their 40-day moving average and you'll want to watch that closely if we were to push through this level then I think we're stretching on up here to around 45 50 percent on level um, in t2108 may be available if those bears find inspiration here well maybe a press back down here to test this price support unfortunately that would be only about 25 percent of the stocks holding above their 40 day that could really bring in the bears and you'll really notice here that we do have this downtrend here if those bears were to engage it shouldn't be a real big surprise if we push back and then if we take a look at that t2107 percentage of stocks holding above their 200 day moving average also surged up on friday but not as much as i really would have expected 43 44 percent of the stocks holding above their 200 day moving average you can see we're pressing into a little bit of price resistance i was expecting maybe a little bit more up there around 45 percent if they can push on through today to that upside that might be the place that we may seek out and we might even be able to squeeze hard enough to get up here around 50 percent so watch that carefully and then again if those bears were to come in and attack i'm going to look for a little bit of place down here around 38 39 area where we might catch a little bit of price support if those bears were to come in also you want to keep in mind we get this little bit of downtrend in here so it wouldn't be that big of a surprise if those bears were to come in and attack our t2101 certainly is showing us that momentum is in the bull's favor but we're kind of stretching again here that um, we're really stretching that that rubber band pretty tight here we might get that bit of a snap back on the bearish side notice that we're running into a little bit of resistance level here in the chart and if those bears were to come in this would be a place where we shouldn't be too surprised if they do if we take a look at our um, economic calendar for today our economic calendar does have some things on it that we'll want to be paying attention to and can certainly move this market substantially we've got a lot of reports coming this week and some big notables that we'll want to be uh, really paying attention to. Notice that we've got a PMI number here this morning. Those have been really problematic for us. PMI has been very, very weak. Um, it'll be interesting to see if it starts to improve here. Um, uh, you know um, with these numbers and I don't know with some of the numbers I've been seeing I don't know if I'd hold my breath on that just yet and we've got an ISM number coming in here um, that's the bigger number here today we'll want to watch that one also been a bit problematic and then of course construction spending as we've been seeing these housing prices starting to slip back construction spending well, it's also been just a little bit uncertain, so we'll want to watch that closely here this morning. And then keeping in mind, we've got a couple of bond auctions here this afternoon. Bonds have been holding their own. They really haven't pulled back all that much, so we'll want to watch those closely. Keeping in mind as we move forward this 
this week we're going to have a lot of jobs data we got factory orders and then we got the job openings report we know that that's been hot and certainly the fed doesn't want to see that hot so we'll have to watch that closely we've got some fed speakers coming in we got adp numbers coming in here on um, wednesday international trading good we've got ism services and a petroleum status we're going to get those job challenger job cuts on thursday with the jobless claims we've got bullard in here speaking a natural gas report and then we're going to wrap this all up here on friday with that employment situation number and um, so a lot of jobs data coming at us we need to start seeing those jobs numbers weaken up a lot more to make the fed happy so far they've been stubbornly strong Let's take a look at our um, earnings calendar here for today. Now our earnings calendar is going to be really light and, and although I'm going to put some things on the calendar, honestly they're not all that particularly notable um, to really move the market. But I did come up with some uh, for today that we will want to be paying attention to. Um, so let's take a look at those real quick. Um, AYI, AYI reporting this morning, certainly a notable here today, pushing up strongly in the pre-market. Watch that closely. We've got a lot of resistance up here to be paying attention to as well in AYI. We're also going to hear from um, LNN today. We're going to hear from MSM today we're going to hear from rgp and we're also going to hear from sgh I, again um they're certainly notable in in their size and and volume that they they trade but not really the names that normally move the market a bunch so you'll want to just kind of keep that in mind and we're we're going to be very, very light on these earnings reports for the next couple of weeks. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me this quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, please do me that favor and click that um, thumbs up button. Leave a uh, brief comment um, on the video. That helps the channel to continue to grow. And I just want to say thanks to everyone who does take the time to do that. And thank you to everyone who shares these, these videos out there on your social media feed. I do truly appreciate it. And just a huge shout out to those of you who continue to support the channel through the buy me a coffee link just below the title of the video. You guys are truly awesome. I can't even tell you how much I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Let's take a look at a few of these charts and let's keep in mind, guys, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. As a matter of fact, you're going to have to do your own due diligence and be very, very careful here. There could be some big point moves this week and possible whipsaws as well. So be prepared for just about anything. Now, the first, first thing I want to bring up is this huge surge in oil. Um, we're getting a big pop up on that decision from OPEC this weekend to cut per Production. So watch this closely. Um, uh, we've got the White House saying, no, this is a bad idea. But um, of course, they would probably be saying that since they have depleted our energy reserves dramatically and they were hoping to buy cheap oil. Well, not that situation going on here right now. So as we approach these resistance levels in the chart, let's watch that on that big gap up. But I think we may want to be getting involved in some oil here heading into Memorial Day when we typically see gas prices peak. Now, there's a problem with this. As we continue to try to fight the inflation here in the market and the Fed's been working hard, remember one of the major factors of inflation and a major factor um, that affects consumer confidence and consumer sentiment is the price of gasoline. And if we start seeing gasoline going up, that's going to be a problem for the Fed as we're continuing to fight this inflation. And that is such a major calculation into that inflation cost. That could be problematic if we continue to see oil prices surge to the upside. And there certainly is a reason that that could occur with uh, um, that production being cut so dramatically by OPEC and its partners. So watch that closely. Now, taking a look at that, um, we have been seeing um, 
um, Warren Buffett continuing to buy, 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 buy on OXY as it's been going down. OXY now breaking through in a really big surge here um, this morning on um, OXY. So watch that carefully. I wouldn't want to chase it here this morning. It's up so much. It, it If it were to whipsaw back down, that could be a little bit of a problem. But any rest or pullback in here would certainly set up an opportunity here in OXY. And I think you could probably say that uh, on just about um, um, any of these oil stocks that have just been surging or, or just hugely up today um in the market so let's keep a close eye on those i think um, we still have to be keeping an eye on gold and silver now gold and silver have been very very strong and we're approaching two thousand dollars an ounce on spot gold and if we were to break through that big round number in gold boy i want you to notice these tops up here that could really send us higher so we'll want to watch that closely it's really going to be dependent on how um, our dollar um, continues to move how those bonds continue to move so watch that closely here in gold and also silver if you want physical gold and silver i'm going to say phys Oops. PHYS, and I would go to their website and check this out, guys. Uh, PHYS offers um, um, where you're buying actual physical gold um, that you can have transferred directly to you once you buy enough of it that they can uh, distribute it to you. So keep an eye on PHYS. And then um, silver would be uh, PSLV. So keep an eye on those. Those are also interesting in that sector. Now, talking about metals and mining, um, we saw a pretty good surge last week in FCX. FCX pushing back into res some resistance and downtrend. If this were to break out up here, um, break that resistance and hold a higher low, boy, I'd be watching for that upside trend maybe in here on copper. So kind of keep that in mind. You might also want to keep an eye out here. Do you guys know that I've been mentioning Palo Alto here for a while? There's that nice little pop out of the box pattern in Friday. It made that move, squeezed right through that move, popped on up looking good, maybe following that trend up here to the upside keep an eye on Palo Alto. You might want to also be keeping an eye on Spotify. Um, Spotify making a nice little move here to the upside, trying to push on through. Now, one of the things that could really um, um, help this is if those consumers start to feel a little bit more relaxed here in the market, this may really pick things up. I don't know that they're ready to feel a lot more relaxed, but watch that closely. I like this breakout here in the chart and the next upside target, I think might be all the way up into here into that 148 area so there'd be certainly some upside opportunity in here if that can get moving you might also want to keep an eye on shop um, shopify has been trying to move up here now this has been a little bit choppy in here as you can see broke that trend but we're resuming back to the upside we held above that resistance held it as support stretching through so a little bit of rest in here i think shopify might be coming back around for a little bit of upside move to the upside um upside move to the upside stupid statement um as you can see right here um um, Roku and this is one I've been watching and this thing has been just bouncing in a range here pretty substantial range in this bounce but we continue to hold this support so keep an eye on Roku and I'm gonna go to Disney here for a second and I think Disney had a pretty good move last week now certainly we're pushing into some resistance here in the chart but there's been an awful lot of coverage on this a lot of a lot of pump a lot of hype out here about Disney recovering and coming around. So maybe it will. Um, if it pops through that resistance, great. If it rests through here over to the trend, great. Um, let's watch that up here for that next upside opportunity if Disney can break through. I think we still have to continue to watch these casino stocks. Casinos really taking off here at the end of 
the week last week and we're shooting up here this morning maybe testing some resistance highs here and win but watch those closely some of those casino stocks showing quite a little bit of bullishness so keep a close eye on those so with that everyone hey i want to wish you all a fantastic day thanks for watching this morning i do appreciate it thanks for supporting the channel you guys are truly awesome i wish you all the best have a great day and i'll see you right back here bright and early Tuesday morning.